today I'm going to be reviewing the 66 North Jacla Down Parka. Okay, so here's the 66 North Jacla Down Parka. I picked this up on Black Friday. It was on sale for roughly $1,000. It normally retails for $1,500 Canadian. I thought it was a good deal. It looked like a nice jacket, so I decided to pick it up. There wasn't much information on Reddit or YouTube. There's no reviews really talking about whether or not this jacket was actually warm or whether it was worth the price. So I thought I would do a review of it so people would know whether or not it's worth the price um, or you should pick up a different jacket instead of this one. 66 North is a Icelandic brand that mainly make outdoor um, clothing, not so much performance clothing, but just outdoor warm clothing for um, being up in that sort of cold Icelandic climates. This is their um, professional Arctic down parka and is mainly used for things like photographers, videographers, uh, static use in very cold climates. The jacket comes in three colors. I've got the black one here. There's also a dark navy blue and a white. In terms of sizing for this jacket, I stayed true to size, which is a size large. Um, it is made to fit a mid layer underneath. So something like a fleece sweater or a light synthetic jacket or something underneath, that's what this is really sized for. So if you're in between sizes, they recommend that you size down one size. Okay, let's go through some of the features of this jacket. So let's start off with the hood of this jacket. There are two different options. You can either go with the Arctic Fox fur liner or a trim, or you can go with the down hood trim. Um, I haven't really seen many other jackets on the market that actually offer this down hood trim as opposed to the fur. Um, I don't really like the fur look of the jacket necessarily, so I decided to pick up the down version. And also, when it's very cold out, I usually wear a fur hat, so I didn't really see the, the point in getting a fur trim for this jacket. So the trim of this hood also has a hard wiring that goes around it, which can be molded and adjusted depending how you want the hood to fit on your face. So when it's up here, you can actually uh, bend it different ways so that it properly fits your face and prevents any cold wind from getting in. The hood on this jacket comes with two adjusters on the back. Um, so you can either adjust it from the front to the back so that it's um, not as folding forward. You can also tighten from the sides. The buckles on the jacket are actually big enough so that you can uh, pull and adjust them if you're using if you're wearing mitts or gloves, which is really nice and you don't need to take them off to adjust the fit of the hood. There is also two drawstring cords here which help tighten the um, the hole of the jacket so that it fits more form to your face. But as you can see when the hood is fully done up, it basically covers your entire face and then the hood trim can be adjusted if you want to further um, blocking the air or wind from coming in, which is really nice. I really like that aspect about this hood. Uh, it also comes with this sort of, I don't know if it's a visor or whatever, that can be buttoned down um, like this. But if you want to um, block additional wind from coming in from the sides, you can actually fold this out. And when this is folded out, it really pushes the hood forward, as you can see, and it really can prevent any wind from coming and hang your face, which I really like. Um, additionally, the hood is also lined with a fleece liner, so it's very soft on your face. Um, yeah, and I would say this is probably one of the best hoods I've actually had on a jacket. Also, as you can see, the hood is very oversized, which is nice, it's very comfortable. You can fit a big hat underneath if you want. Um, and it's also heavy duty enough that the wind doesn't actually blow the hood off your head. I've noticed with some other jackets that I've had in the past, um, I actually have to hold the hood on my head while walking in really heavy winds. Um, but with this, this jacket, the wind doesn't actually blow the hood off at all, which I really enjoy as well. Since one of the main uh, purposes of the jacket is for photography um, in the Arctic, there's a lot of useful pockets in here uh, for holding different types of gear. So in total, there's 15 different pockets. There's a pocket on the side right here. Um, which maybe you put like an ID badge or something like that has the logo. There's also a um, pocket on the front right here, which you can put some sort of uh, ID or your keys or something like that, which is really nice. There's also two chest pockets right here on the front that are waterproof sealed. 
along with two other chest pockets that unzip right here. So you can either put your hands in here like this or put some other uh, gear up here. There's also two pockets on each side at the hips. So there's, a, there's fleece line pockets here where your hands can come in uh, to keep your hands warm if for some reason you don't have gloves on at the time. And then furthermore, there's also Velcro covering another zipper pocket here and the same thing on this side. So it's really nice that these zip up and have Velcro growing over top. Really prevents anything from uh, coming out of the pockets. Furthermore, what I've noticed uh, that I really like is these hand warmer pockets don't have a zipper. Um, on some of the other parkas I've had in the past, um, having that zipper on this pocket, sometimes your glove gets snagged on it or your hand and it's really uncomfortable. So I really don't mind that there's no zippers on these side pockets here. I actually find it more comfortable and easy to slip my hands in and out of those pockets. So on the inside of the jacket, we have a zipper pocket right here that is insulated where you can put your phone or some sort of electronics that you don't want to get cold. There's also another Velcro pocket here, which you can also put a phone or AirPods or something of that nature. Um, it actually has a cord section that goes up here, so if you are still someone that uses wired earphones, um, you can feed that cord through this section right here. Uh, furthermore, there's two dump pockets at the bottom of the jacket that are closed in by Velcro. So when you're walking inside, if you want to put your gloves or your hat or something in these pockets, it's really nice. Um, on most of the jackets I've had, the dump pockets are usually just open and don't have a Velcro on them. And for these, I actually don't really enjoy the Velcro that much. I find when I'm trying to put my gloves, say I'm going to um, do some photography and I want to take off my big mitts, I sometimes find it hard to actually open this up uh, with the Velcro because you need to hold this. So say for example, you're holding your mitts in this hand, you want to try and open this. Sometimes I find it kind of difficult. So that's something I don't really like that much about those pockets, but I've managed to make it work anyways. In terms of the adjustability of this jacket, there is drawstring cinches at the bottom hem of the jacket to close it in to prevent any wind from coming out from the bottom. There's also cinches at the waist here and here. So you can cinch in the jacket from the middle and close it in further. So say the jacket is a bit big on you when you don't wear a mid layer, you can cinch that in to really keep it close to your body and keep that heat and warm uh, warmth in the jacket. The cuffs of the jacket come with a ribbed inner right here, which is nice at, pre nice at preventing any cold from coming in from the sleeve. And they are also adjustable by Velcro here to really tighten that up and allow you to slip some large mitts over top of the sleeves. The zipper on this jacket is also a double way zipper uh, made by YKK. It's very heavy duty and it's actually one of the nicest zippers I've had on a jacket. I don't find it sticks at all and it's very smooth moving up and down. So 66 North rates this jacket for negative 30 degrees Celsius and below. And it also has an outer fabric that is wind and water resistant up to 9,000 millimeters. So let's go over some of the materials used in this jacket. The outer material is made of a durable nylon mix, um, which helps prevent any abrasions. And as you, when you feel it on your hand, it feels very rough and very durable. Um, when I go through walks in the forest, uh, through sticks and stuff like that, I've never found any issues with hole poking or anything. It's a very durable jacket. Uh, obviously they're not made as a lightweight jacket, um, a lightweight down jacket. So this is going to be super durable and rugged and last you a long time. And probably the most important feature of this jacket is the down insulation. 66 North uses an 800 fill power goose down. Um, they say that there's over a pound of down actually used in this jacket. Um, additionally, the 800 fill power rating is based on the European standards. So as some people may know, the fill power standards between the Europe and uh, North America is slightly different. So an 800 fill power in Europe standards is apparently equivalent to roughly 850 fill power um, North American standard. The filling is 90% down, 10% feathers. When I was looking at other jackets and comparing this one to them, a lot of the other brands don't give you all the details in terms of the down. They don't even give you the breakdown of down to feathers. They don't give you the fill weight. Um, and some of them use duck down, which is apparently not as uh, insulating as goose down. So this I found was probably one of the highest quality down products on the market, which is one of the reasons why I picked it up. 
Later on in the video, I'm going to be comparing this jacket to an Outdoor Survival Canada down jacket as well as a Canada Goose down jacket. The use case for this jacket, um, I bought it for the extreme cold weather up here in Canada. We frequently get to minus 20, minus 30 and below Celsius. And so I wanted a really warm parka that I could just throw over everything and really keep me warm. Um, I take my dog uh, for multiple walks a day in the freezing cold. And I also have been doing a lot of photography, even winter photography. So I wanted uh, some extra pockets to hold lenses and batteries and whatnot. And then also just to keep me warm if my dog's being really slow while we're walking. And I found it really fits that, um, that need very well. And generally in terms of the temperature I use for this jacket, if it's anything above minus 15, it's way too warm and I'm gonna sweat and I end up having to walk with the jacket off like this. Um, even with a really light t-shirt, um, I have to take off my hat and gloves. It's just way too hot. So I wouldn't even bring this out until it's like minus 20 degrees Celsius or colder. Um, and even with that, I've been wearing it with just a t-shirt and had no issue. Let's talk about the performance of this jacket now. So obviously people are buying this specifically for the warmth of the jacket. And I've found it's excelled in that category. It's definitely the warmest jacket I've ever purchased and worn. Um, and I regularly sweat in this jacket when it's even minus 20 or below. I've yet to find an instance where I needed to wear a mid layer under this. I would imagine until it's like minus 35 or something, I really don't need anything under this except for a light t-shirt. Um, not even a base layer actually when I wear this. Do keep in mind that this is during mostly static activities um, and some walking obviously. If I'm walking my dog and we start going uphill or something like that, I found that I start sweating and have to unzip the jacket to dump some heat. Well, it's like minus 35 or below, um, I don't really see myself wearing a mid layer under this, maybe a base layer at minus 30, but that's really it. As long as I have some nice gloves or mitts on and either snow pants or long johns, I find I don't get cold at all. Um, even without a hat, the hood is plenty warm. Sometimes I do like wearing a hat just because with this hood, because it's so thick, um, it can sometimes be hard to hear people. So if you're walking with other people, it can be hard to hear what they're saying. So sometimes I'll wear a hat instead of the hood. If you look at some of the reviews of this jacket, um, you'll notice that people talk about cold spots. So for example, the zipper is not insulated, uh, maybe about an inch on each side. And what people have said is that the cold air is getting through the center, but I haven't actually found that to be the case at all. And that's with me wearing very light t-shirts underneath. Um, I haven't felt any wind cutting through. I haven't felt any cold air coming in at all. Uh, maybe when you're getting to those super extreme cold temperatures, you might feel something, but that's why I think they say that the jacket is meant to be worn with a mid layer. So I think if you're wearing a base layer and a fleece under this, I don't believe you're gonna be feeling any cold air coming through the center right here. Um, but again, it's probably good to try it out and see for yourself. But me personally, um, I do run very cold and yet I still haven't found any cold air coming in through the zipper. In terms of comfortability of this jacket, it is very comfortable. You will feel when you put it on, it's very heavy. I wasn't expecting it to be as heavy as it was. You really feel it on your shoulders. And obviously that's something to be expected when you're wearing a super heavy duty um, expedition style down jacket. There are no seams on the inside or anything like that that I find digging in on me, which with some jackets or sweaters, you do feel that. With this, it's completely comfortable and fits very well. In terms of durability of this jacket, uh, I've had it for a few months now and I haven't had any problems with it. The zipper doesn't stick at all. I really enjoy how easy it comes up and down. Um, it has a very big tab for grabbing. So even if you're wearing thick mitts or gloves, it's very easy to adjust without needing to take off your mitts. The outer material is also very sturdy and strong. Um, I've walked through very tight holes in the forest and have had no issues with any holes or anything of that nature. In terms of maintaining this jacket, obviously at the end of every season, I'm gonna be washing it with the proper tech wash and then using the uh, those types of down balls, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, for maintaining the loft of this um, and then hanging it somewhere where it's not compressed during the summer months when I'm not using it. I'm gonna be comparing this jacket to two other jackets on the market that I was also looking at. Um, one of them was the Outdoor Survival Canada Mission Jacket and the other was the Canada Goose Snow Mantra Jacket. For the Outdoor Survival Canada Mission Jacket, um, it obviously looks like a very nice expensive jacket. It comes in at 
$1,850, I believe. So that's $850 more than what I spent on this jacket. And that alone kind of deterred me from getting it um, for the fact that this was on sale. If this wasn't on sale, I'd be more likely to consider getting that jacket um, as well and sort of compare and see which one was actually better. But just based on the price alone, I wasn't able to justify spending $1,800 on a jacket. Furthermore, for the Outdoor Survival Canada Mission jacket, they say that it's 800 fill powered down, but they don't give any other details in terms of the breakdown of um, feathers to down, which is very important because down is really what provides that warmth. Um, so if it's a different type of ratio than this one, it might be less warm. They also don't tell you how much down they actually put in the jacket. Um, whereas at least 66 North says that it's over a pound of down. So at least you have a rough estimate of how much, um, but Outdoor Survival Canada doesn't actually provide you with how much down they're putting in it. And furthermore, it's a mix of goose and duck down. So from what I've done, uh, seen in my research, goose down is actually higher quality and warmer than duck down. To what degree, I'm not really sure, but what, what you see with most jackets now is they either do a mix of goose and duck down or just duck down. Um, so the fact that this uses entirely goose down was another big positive and a reason why I got this uh, Jacques Leparka instead. And additionally, the 66 North jacket, I feel like fits better in with an urban environment and doesn't look so expedition-y, I guess. Um, the mission jacket from Outdoor Survival Canada, if you take a look at it, I'll put up a picture. Um, it has like those like window ID cards on it and clips and whatnot, and it looks very um, even more heavy duty than this one. So I feel like it would look kind of silly walking around in that jacket if you're not um, in the Arctic climate exactly. However, um, I think if they were the same price, I'd be more likely to pick up both and really wear them and see which one um, was warmer and which one looked better, better actually on me when I was wearing it. But because of the $800 price difference, there was just really no reason for me to even consider that jacket. Because um, I'm not really willing to spend $1,800 on a winter jacket at this point. And now let's compare this to the Canada Goose Snow Mantra Jacket. That's going to be basically the warmest jacket that Canada Goose makes that you can buy. Um, it's very rare that you're actually going to see someone wearing that around on the street. Maybe people will be wearing the Canada Goose Expedition Jacket. But the Snow Mantra is really the warmest jacket and what I use to compare to the 66 North jacket. The Snow Mantra comes in at $1,800, which again is $800 more than what I spent on this jacket, which is a very big difference. And I couldn't really justify spending that amount unless it was crazy uh, warmer than this one, but I didn't really see that based on the specs available. In terms of the down on the Canada Goose Snow Mantra, they say it's 670 five fill power goose down. So it's nice that it's goose down, but the fill power is less than what's on this jacket. Um, I'm, I plan on doing a video, video later on to really compare different types of down and see how you can really find whether one jacket is warmer than the other. Uh, Canada Goose doesn't give you the fill power and they also don't give you the breakdown of feathers uh, to goose down. Based on that alone, I was kind of skeptical about the quality of the down on that jacket. Um, from some research I've done, the Canada Goose jackets have apparently gone down in quality from what they used to be. Uh, some have said that the Snow Mantra, because it's their high-end um, Arctic jacket, has maintained that quality. But I was kind of skeptical of that in and of, in and of itself. So that's one of the other reasons why I picked up the 66 North jacket. Also, um, living here in Canada, the Canada Goose jackets are obviously very popular and many people wear them. So. Uh, you don't really see anyone wearing this brand of jacket. So I just thought that was kind of a cool thing to have a different brand of jacket than what everyone else is wearing as well. Maybe that doesn't matter for you, but um, I just thought it'd be interesting to have a different jacket from what everyone else is wearing. I will say the Snow Mantra does look like a very cool jacket. Um, I just like the look of how big it is and all the features it has. So it does look cool again. And if this was a higher price, I would consider buying that one as well and just comparing and seeing which I like better. But just the price alone again, um, and the fact that 66 North gives you all the details of the down, um, I just preferred it as an option and that's why I picked it up. So that concludes my review of the 66 North Jacques Le Down Parka. The jacket is currently on sale. It's December 30th. And uh, when I checked on Altitude Sports, it was on sale for just over $1,000, which is a great deal. 
Um, it does seem to go on sale regularly, so I don't recommend getting it at full price, but I think it's pretty, um, pretty easy for you to pick up that jacket at $1,000 um, on Altitude Sports. Just wait for some sort of sale, either a year-end sale, um, Black Friday, or Boxing Day. I definitely recommend picking up this jacket. It's extremely warm. It's by far the warmest jacket I've ever worn. And if you live somewhere up north where it gets very cold and you spend time either doing photography, um, spend a lot of time walking your dog or anything static, maybe waiting for a bus or something, um, and you guys get relatively uh, consistently below 20 degrees, I definitely recommend picking up this jacket. Uh, check it out for yourself. And uh, if you do have this jacket, maybe write some comments below um, what you found about it. Uh, do you feel like you get air leaks coming in from the zipper or not? I personally haven't, but uh, let me know.